Glasgow. We are now bringing you the whole of the big fight live and in stereo. Pat Clinton of Scotland against Isidro Perez of Mexico for that world flyweight title. Our commentator at ringside, Harry Carpenter. Thank you, Doogie. It all takes me back a dozen years or so when we used to come up to Glasgow for the great nights involving this man, Jim Watt. There he is, the former world lightweight champion, sitting ringside with his wife, Margaret. They were great nights, and this has that same feel about it. We're all set to receive the two boxes now here in the Kelvin Hall, which is absolutely packed with people. And we are told that the first boxer to come to the ring will be the champion himself, Isidro Perez of Mexico. silver Mexican sombrero the champion who had such a struggle to make the weight today enters the Kelvin Hall ring 29 years old Isidro Perez and now the most enormous cheer goes up to welcome the challenger from Scotland, Pat Clinton. such a reception. It's not the first time Perez has gone to the other man's country for a world title fight, but I don't suppose he's ever heard in his life such a reception for the local man as Pat Clinton has had here tonight. It even, I think, surpasses those heady days of Jim Watt. Ladies and gentlemen, will you please be upstanding for the national anthems? three anthems played tonight the second the Mexican
finally, Flower of Scotland, sung by Ronnie Brown. Ladies and gentlemen, Ronnie Brown and the Flower of Scotland. are running high tonight. Sombreros and tartan. Thank you. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event of the evening. Tommy Gilmore, on behalf of Britain's premier boxing organisation, the St Andrews Sporting Club, in association with Glasgow District Council and sponsored by McEwen's Lager present the main event of the evening a 12 round contest three minutes each round for the WBO flyweight championship of the world presenting and introducing on my right and in the red corner the official WBO flyweight champion of the world from Mexico Isidro Sid Perez And on my left, gentlemen, in the blue corner, also my pleasure to present and introduce the former undefeated British, European and Scottish flyweight champion, the challenger from Croy, Pat Clinton. <laughs> the judges appointed by the WBO for this contest from Denmark, Mr. Torben Seaman Hansen. From Michigan, USA, Mr. Bob Watson. From New Jersey, USA, Mr. Frank Burnett. Your referee for this contest from Puerto Rico, Mr. Viso Fernandez. Your timekeeper, Mr. Jim Russell from Glasgow. Chief Medical Officer, Dr. James Shea. Your steward in charge, Mr. Jerry Woolard, and your WBO adjudicator, Mr. Cesar Miranda. At the weigh-in, both boxes scaled exactly eight stone. Perez, red corner, Clinton, blue corner. So, the moment for Pat Clinton has come. 17 years he's been a boxer, and now here is the big chance. The nut brown figure of the champion on the left, Isidro Perez. Four times he had to come to scales today to make eight stone. What effect that will have on him in this fight, we'll have to wait and see. But surely it can't have done him any good. Twelve rounds for the World Boxing Organization title. Clinton, of course, 
a south four he boxes right fist and right foot forward we shouldn't underrate this man Perez this is his third defense and as I said before he's accustomed to taking the fight into the other man's country and coming out a winner he's fought in good class for many years now he was a top class light flyweight before he won the world flyweight title so he brings a lot of experience in almost 60 professional fights to bear on this contest in Glasgow and Clinton will need to be absolutely at his best to go with him Perez will attack and Clinton will counter punch that's his style stamina has been taken out of Perez and getting down to eight stone then it'll be very much in his mind to try to get this fight out of the way early because he surely won't want to go too many rounds if he's short on strength and trying to pick him off. Clinton guilty of pulling his man on to him there. fair bit of feeling around that Perez may well be past his best with Perez attacking and Clinton doing the counter punching. Well, this man is making his third attempt tonight. This is the record as far as we can work it out. There's a little bit of disagreement over how many, exactly how many pro fights he, he's had, but it's absolutely certain that he turned pro when he was 16 in 1979. So there may be one or two fights early on that didn't get recorded, but that's what we make it. 47 wins in 57 fights. Well, it took him 11 years, Perez, and more than 50 fights to become a world champion. He had two goes at light flyweight and didn't make it. And then finally, he won this WBO title. The little man from Acapulco. Clinton in the tartan trunks. Very upright. The unorthodox southpaw stance. Got to keep moving in this fight. He'll be quite happy to let Perez doing the attacking. As tape coming loose from the champion's right glove. be a very common thing these days whether they're not making the sticky tape quite as well as they used to I don't know Tenton who comes from a boxing family keeping very very cool 
in this electric atmosphere on the biggest night of his life and treating it as though it were just another fight at least that's how it looks Clinton is the former British and European champion. He gave those titles up in order to concentrate on getting a world title chance, and here it is. But caught by one. Well, another wild punch. But for the most part, he's keeping useful distance between himself and the champion, and he's putting the counters in very accurately. Perez forcing it all the time and getting through occasionally and Clinton perhaps being made to come up with punches a little faster than he'd like to keep the man off still getting clipped Clinton still no sign of that frightening battle that Perez had this morning with the scales. So the little man from Croy, which is about 15 miles northeast of Glasgow, a mining community. Here he is, Pat Clinton, back in his corner after two rounds. And there, in the statistics, is pointed up the extraordinary difference in professional experience between these two men. Perez, you remember, has said something like 60 professional fights, and this is Clinton's 20th. But he's been around for a long time, and he was a fine amateur before he ever turned pro. He was in three ABA finals. He lost the first, but he won the next two. So round three now, coming up with Perez just a shade ahead. And the Puerto Rican referee, Miso Fernandez, brings them together for the third. In this cauldron of the Kelvin Hall in Glasgow. Nice left hand from Clinton. His tactics of Clinton's are working quite nicely in this round. Using his feet well, pushing the counter punches in whenever he sees the chance. And Perez beginning to get picked off quite often now. Around the head. Perez for the first time looking distinctly uncomfortable. Clinton taking him all around the ring, which is the right tactics here. If this man's got any weakness at all after that struggle with the weight, then you must keep him on the move and draw the strength. What's left of it?
tape coming loose from the left glove of uh, Perez now. takes a deep breath and swallows hard he's having to chase hard here and he's not getting far been made to miss a lot and that's very exhausting is a very cool customer indeed knows absolutely how he's going to conduct this fight going to try and do a clinical job on the man fair right hand from Perez got through and the pace is hopping up. Two good lefts from Tenton went in there. He picked his moment beautifully. And he's making some of Perez's work look very ragged. got quite quick hands but an awful lot of the punches are missing the mark already Perez beginning to flex his arms as though he's beginning to feel it that's a beautiful tactic by Clinton he turned his man punches go around the back of the neck of Clinton Clinton but let the Mexican against the Scot this is the first ever world flyweight championship between a British fighter and a Mexican fighter Scotland of course as you heard very early on in the program has a wonderful tradition in flyweights the little men who weigh exactly 100 weight eight stone
goalkeeper is still moving forward, but not throwing so many punches now. That's a fair right hand from Perez. One of the few he's got through in the last couple of rounds. Clinton just needs to keep jabbing away himself just to remind the judges that he's scoring. Trouble with so many judges these days that they only look at the man who's coming forward. now beginning to look very much slower. Seems to be in some discomfort. Perez, he keeps swallowing hard. He's having trouble with his gum shield. He keeps flexing the arms. And occasionally, I think I've seen him wince when the punches go into the body. That's a good left hand high up on the head. And Perez even nodded in appreciation. He knew it was a good punch himself. And Perez has gone walkabout for some reason. He went to his corner, then walked away. Now he comes back. Clinton, alert, sharp, very much in control now. The signs are good for Britain and Scotland. full of water Perez and he's getting rid of it spit by spit <laughs> Perez trying to open up the defences of Clinton trying to get him hustled and uh, shake him out of his boxing stride but no sign at the moment that he can do that sent him remaining extraordinarily cool and handling this with sheer generalship another beautiful left hand Perez clinging on the sixth round, we're almost halfway. And this fight is very much in Clinton's hands at the moment. Everything Perez throws falls short. Nothing more tiring than constantly missing. And you keep thinking back to that struggle against the scales between 11 and 1 o'clock this morning. This title may well have been lost in those two hours.
little more even this round. Perez has done rather more attacking. Hasn't landed too many good punches. On the other hand, Clinton hasn't come through with too many effective counters either. But the crowd in the Kelvin Hall, well pleased with what they're... And so we enter on the second half of the scheduled 12 rounder for the World Boxing Organization Flyweight Championship. It's such a pity these days that there are four major governing bodies in world boxing. Because whoever wins this cannot call himself the undisputed flyweight champion of the world. There are three other men around who are also going to say, I am the flyweight champion. One of them, of course, is Dave McCauley from Northern Ireland, who is the International Boxing Federation champion. He, too, says, I am the world champion. But that's the way professional boxing is these days with fragmented control. Clinton, never quite there when Perez wants him. Perez, who was born near Acapulco, and in his youth, used to do that high diving act off the cliffs of Acapulco, diving 100, or is it 150 feet into the sea to get coins because the family, the father died all too early and the family were very poor indeed. And this little man built his strength diving from the Acapulco cliffs. Clinton doing a Highland reel around this ring. And again, picking his man off with these beautifully sharp little counters. Which may not be damaging Perez too much, but they'll certainly be frustrating him beyond measure. Every time he puts his face forward, he feels the bite of Clinton's leather. That's a good attack by Perez. Best attack he's had for a long time. And for the first time, Clinton, not quite in command. And being caught by too many punches in this seventh round. That's the first time Clinton's appeared to be in any sort of trouble. And this is a big and disturbing attack from the Scottish point of view. And Clinton looks tired as he goes back to his corner. And Perez has had the first big success of the fight. And it remains to be seen now just how much that's taken out of Clinton. Looking across at the corner, he's breathing hard. So now, what can he bring to bear? in this eighth round. Those closing moments of the seventh will have given the little man in the white trunk so much more confidence. He chased and chased for seven rounds and got nowhere. Clinton now has to try to work to re-establish command.
again. The tape is working loose from the glove. Oh no, it doesn't. It's, sorry, it's the lace on his right boot. So a moment's breather for the two fighters. And this crowd anxious for them to get on with it. Perez, lace tied, and back they go. Eighth round. And Clinton now concentrating on trying to pick the counter punches correctly again. setback in the seventh has certainly disturbed the concentration of Clinton hardly surprising Perez smiles as he comes forward and once again Clinton trapped against the ropes and being forced to fight back being forced to fight Perez's fight and not his own Some of the snap, the alertness and sharpness has gone out of Clinton's work. But it's still only the eighth round. Four more to come after this. But this is another good round for the champion. He's had two very good rounds in a row. So, the applause a little more muted. <laughs> the Tartan versus the Sombrero. Tenton versus Perez. The WBO title at stake. Clinton made such a good start over the first six rounds. The last two have been unhappy. And one has to say that Perez is fighting a remarkable fight for a man who only just made the weight at one o'clock today. If he hadn't made eight stone at one o'clock, he would no longer be the champion. A little more spring has come back into Clinton's legs. But he's got to keep punching. He'll get no points for clever footwork. All that early depression has left Perez. Clinton scampering now. The pinpoint precision of the punching has left him. They're no longer going in, deterring the man.
this crowd trying to urge Clinton to get his right hand moving. But Clinton no longer has that sort of urge in him. Small cut on Perez, on Perez's right eye. Just above the eye in the corner, a small cut has appeared on the champion's eye. There it is. It's not too serious yet, but it's in a rather nasty position. It could get a good deal worse than that. And marked slightly under the left eye. Just three rounds to go. And the whole thing in the balance. And again, Perez sets up one of these big attacks as he did in the seventh. Once again, Tintum trapped in a corner. And Perez is going to the finish here, if he can find it. He's put a lot of energy into that. Clinton looks disturbed and unsteady. And these two men are beginning to get extremely tired, but it's Clinton who looks the more tired of the two at the moment. The Scots legs no longer keep him out of trouble. Perez comes straight back at him again. Perez trying so hard to finish this, and he can't quite do it. He hasn't got the strength of punch to put Clinton away. And that might all go back to the battle with the scales. And Clinton has come through. Scotland is proving his courage here beyond any question there were moments when all seemed lost but now it seems anything but lost Clinton's strength might just come out on top after all round 10 Astonishing round. The bell is coming up. There it is. And what an amazing round that was. The tenth round. Crucial because there were seconds when Clinton looked as though he might be on the way out of this battle. And then he turned the whole thing round and wound up the stronger of the two men. And so this world championship is still undecided and we have six minutes of fighting left if we need it to decide who is going to be the WBO champion. And this Scottish crowd are lifting themselves now. They're jumping up and down to urge Clinton on. This was a remarkable comeback by Clinton. Astonishing scenes. And 
and both men a little slow to come to the center of the ring. You can hardly wonder at it. Two rounds left. Once again, the man in the white shorts, the champion, Perez from Mexico, comes hurtling into Clinton to try to put this invasive Scott away, but he's pushed him over. That's not a knockdown. He pushed him over, and the Puerto Rican referee signals no knockdown. He was pushed. It's also a sign, of course, that the legs are beginning to get very tired indeed. They've put 30 minutes of hard battling behind them. What a fine contest this is. Two admirable men. Still Perez is pumping the punches out. He half killed himself this morning to make eight stone, and yet, look at this, he's putting up such a battle, and he's still looking quite strong, and I find it amazing. I do, really. And Clinton is still holding on, holding on. coming forward all the time doing the leading Clinton not getting too many punches through once again under heavy attack on the ropes Clinton looks almost sold out he's lying his cheeks out puffing hard and still this nut brown champion from Mexico walks towards him and keeps slinging punches unquestionably Perez's round and we have one to go and I've got Perez in front now Clinton had that extraordinary 10th round but he had a bad 7th and he had a bad 8th a reasonable ninth, but I think he lost that as well so it looks to me as though Perez has just about got the edge here. The referee won't decide anything if he goes the distance. There are three judges here who will score two from the United States and one from Denmark. But this crowd still urging Clinton on. Three minutes of this World Flyweight Championship for the WBO title. Perez in the white trunks, the defending champion in his third defense, and the man in the tartan trunks, Scotland's brave, Pat Clinton, who had control of this fight up to the end of the seventh round. It's been hard going ever since. Scotland that produced such great flyweights as Benny Lynch and Jackie Patterson and Walter McGowan who's here tonight working on a radio commentary. Scotland can be proud of their latest man 
in the flyweight tradition. Pat Tinton, no matter what happens here, Tinton has proved himself of world class tonight. There's no doubt about that. Still marches forward with his long arms. The man almost lost his title on the scales, but putting up the fight of his life to try to keep it in the ring. Clinton still getting some punches back. But he hasn't got that total control that he had earlier. It looks very much as though it's going to go to the judges. And I must say, I thought if it went this far, Perez would never last the distance. But he has a worthy champion and we're gonna have to wait now in a few moments to get the judges decision on this and it finishes with Perez coming forward again and Clinton waves to the crowd he knows he's put up a good fight, but I don't think myself he's done enough to win it. However, the judges are the men who will decide that, and they are Bob Watson from Michigan, United States, Frank Brunette from New Jersey, in the United States, and Torben Hansen from Denmark. Be interesting to see just how the judges have scored because there were moments in the middle of that fight or, or rather in the, the first half of it when Clinton was in absolute control and I looked down on my card and uh, I marked three four and five all rounds to Clinton he, at that point he was going very well indeed and then suddenly it came unstuck at the end of the seventh when he went through that very torrid patch he didn't have a good eighth and he didn't have a very good ninth and then in the tenth all seemed lost for Clinton but he turned it around and came fighting back and he might even just have pinched that round in the end but this little man was advancing throughout and that often carries great weight with professional boxing judges and we shall know in a very few moments from now John Morris the General Secretary or Executive Director or whatever you like to call him from the British Boxing Board of Control has already been to the corner of Clinton and no doubt told him well done what a fight you put up promoter Tommy Gilmore is in the corner there now with him Tommy Gilmore the first Scottish promoter to put on a world title fight in Scotland since I think 1946 Perez, the sombrero back on, and another sombrero has been presented to Clinton. Now he can do the Mexican hat dance. Oh, the photographers are loving that. So everything ends in goodwill among nations hope it lasts when we get the result well this has been a great boxing night in Glasgow and like the Irish they do really get behind one of their own and why not
Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, we have a split decision. Oh, that's interesting. Judge Hansen scores the contest 116, Perez 113, Clinton. Quite a decisive margin from the Danish judge referee. Watson Danish judge Watson scores the contest. Perez 113, Clinton 115. Yeah. So two points in Clinton's favour from one and of the Americans. Judge Brunette scores the contest 114 to 115 in favour of the new flyweight Clinton has done it a split decision and the Scot has won the WBO title what a moment for Britain and for Scotland Clinton is the new champion and the shades of Lynch and Patterson will look down from above and smile on the new Scottish world champion, Pat Clinton, the first Ladies world champion from Scotland since the heyday of Jim Watts. What a moment for Scottish and indeed for British boxing. Quite interesting variation in the scoring there. The Danish judge gave a clear three-point margin to Perez and the other two American judges went for Clinton. So Clinton, who will be 28 next month, can have a birthday celebration to end all birthday celebrations. His 20th professional fight, his 19th win, and he's the WBO flyweight champion. So Perez, the man... the title behind. So the Kelvin Hall, as it did in the days of Jim Watt, comes alive with the roars of triumph for a Scottish win. So it's been quite a night for British and Scottish boxing here. You're looking at the new world flyweight champion, Pat Clinton. Dave McCauley holds the IBF title. What a fight that would be if they could get the two together. For the moment, though, it's Clinton's night, and the tears, the tears of emotion begin to flow from the new champion. Pat Clinton, champion of the world. Mr. Richard Musson. Just get another chorus of Flower of Scotland. Wonderful scenes of triumph, all for Pat Clinton. We end a wonderful night's boxing at the Kelvin Hall in Glasgow, and we hand you back. 115 to 114.